Welcome to Exploring with the Estuarium. My name is Ariel and I'll be your educator. Today we're going to learn about some of the animals that call the Pacific Northwest their home and the adaptations that help them survive in the freezing cold waters of the Puget Sound. During this lesson, you'll get answers to questions such as, what is biodiversity? How is the biodiversity of estuaries unique? And what is adaptation? What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variety of life in a habitat or ecosystem, while biomass is the quantity of life in a habitat or ecosystem. Biodiverse ecosystems are healthy and resilient compared to ecosystems with little variety of life. An ecosystem can have a high biomass but poor biodiversity, making it prone to collapse. For example, a kelp forest in an estuary is home to thousands of organisms ranging from algae to sea otters. Sea otters have a diet that consists of a wide variety of food, like sea urchins, mussels, oysters, fish, and other marine organisms. If something were to happen to that ecosystem to cause a decline in the population of one of the sea otters' prey species, the sea otter would still have plenty of options due to the high level of biodiversity in that ecosystem. What might happen to the sea otter population if the kelp forest ecosystem had poor biodiversity? If there isn't good food availability, then the sea otters will have to move. Sea otters are good indicator species for a healthy ecosystem. If a region or area has a large population of sea otters, it is an indication that there is a good amount of biodiversity. If an area has a small population of sea otters, it could indicate a poor amount of biodiversity. If an area once used to have a large population of sea otters that has declined over the years, it could be an indication of that ecosystem slowly collapsing. Estuary ecosystems provide a safe place for thousands of different species to live, feed, and reproduce. The biodiversity levels of estuaries change seasonally due to migration, feeding, and reproductive patterns. Many migratory birds move north through Pacific Coast estuaries in the spring, then south through estuaries on the Atlantic coast in the fall. Estuaries also play a vital role in the reproduction of species that live part of their lives in freshwater and part in saltwater. These anadromous species, such as salmon, require time in diluted estuarine water to grow accustomed to the change in salinity. During seasons of high food availability, animals such as sharks, whales, and people will travel to estuaries to hunt and forage. Estuaries also provide a diverse range of microhabitats, which enable a huge number of different species with different adaptations to find a home. Adaptation is the process of change by which an organism becomes better suited to its environment. Adaptation is a natural process which happens gradually over thousands or millions of years. It occurs when a random genetic mutation results in a physical change of the way an organism looks or behaves and makes the organism better suited for survival within its habitat. For example, river otters have sharp, shearing rear teeth like those of other land predators like raccoons, dogs, or weasels. Sea otters, however, have flat teeth in the back of their mouths to crush the hard shells of their prey. Millions of years ago, all otters lived on land and had sharp teeth. At some point, due to environmental change, it became beneficial for some groups of otters to eat food from the ocean, such as oysters, urchins, and crabs. Otters with slightly flatter teeth were able to consume more food, allowing them to survive, reproduce, and pass genes for flatter teeth onto their offspring. Those offspring would then pass those genes on, and so on, and so on. Eventually, over hundreds of generations, thousands of tiny mutations in the land otter's genes resulted in the first generation of sea otters. Sea stars have many adaptations. Here we see a purple or ochre sea star, a mottled sea star, and leather sea star. They are keystone species, or species which other species in the ecosystem largely depend on, and if they were removed, the ecosystem might collapse. Sea stars specialize in eating mussels. They have a number of adaptations that help them be the best mussel eater. One of the biggest is their tube feet, which look like white suction cups sticking off of each arm. They can pry open live mussels just using their tube feet. Another adaptation that helps sea stars eat mussels is their stomach, or rather their two stomachs. Sea stars can stick their first stomach outside of their body and into the muscle to dissolve the tissue 
and uses the second stomach to fully digest the prey. The two feet also function as their nose, and they can smell with all of their feet. This is the main way they hunt, but they can also see. They have tiny eye spots on the end of each arm. Sea stars don't see like us. They can see if it is light or dark, but it lets them get a picture of what is around them and helps them avoid predators. At the estuarium, we have plumos and painted anemones. They are an invertebrate, which means they have no backbone or spine, which is unlike humans who are chordates or part of the chordatas, which have a spine. The main adaptation of all anemones is a special type of cell called a nidocyte. Nide for nettles and site for cell. They are the stinging cells of all anemones, jellies, and corals. They use them to feed. Whenever the prey, such as fish, brush against their tentacles, the stinging cells, shaped like harpoons, release and grab hold of the prey. Then the anemone will use the tentacles to bring it closer to their mouth, which is at the center of the anemone. They avoid being eaten because, one, they sting, and two, they have little to no nutritional value. This is our northern kelp crab, Mr. Snappy, who is a male. You can tell the difference between a male and a female crab by looking at the shape of their tail flap located on their underside. Males have a triangle or lighthouse shaped tail and females have a round tail that covers most of their underside because that is where they brood their eggs. Northern kelp crabs are omnivores and eat seaweed and other animals. They have many adaptations for helping to get their food. One is their spider-like legs that help them climb kelp or piers. Kelp crabs use their legs to grip and get around to search for food while also avoiding predators. One of their major adaptations is their claws, which are located in the front and help to ward off predators, fight males for territory, and use them to bring food to their mouth, which is also highly adapted. Kelp crab mouths are made up of many smaller legs that cut or grind the food, just like our teeth. Another adaptation kelp crabs have is their hard carapace or exoskeleton, which helps protect them from predators looking to make them food. Estuaries are some of the most biologically productive ecosystems in the world. Estuaries are ideal habitats for thousands of different plants and animal species. You are connected to an estuary. Your watershed eventually drains into an estuary, so what you and your family do on land and how you take care of your water affects your estuary. Your actions make a difference. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Exploring with the Estuarium. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up. And if you wish to continue to get more of our educational videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at the Puget Sound Estuarium. Bye.